How you doing, everybody? Today we're taking a quick look at No Time to Die, directed by Kerry Joji Fukunaga. This is the latest film in the long-running James Bond franchise, and the last to star Daniel Craig as 007. James Bond has retired from Her Majesty's Secret Service and is hoping to live out a quiet, peaceful life with his girlfriend Madeline. But his peaceful days do not last, because it turns out the people at Spectre are the type to hold a grudge. On top of that, James runs into his old pal Felix Leiter, played once again by Jeffrey Wright, and he is roped into helping him out on a mission for the CIA. All of this leads James to a mysterious new villain named Sapin, played by Rami Malek, who possesses a dangerous weapon that could kill ridiculous numbers of people. Craig's time as Bond has been hit and miss for me, and really that's true of the entire franchise. I mean, if you make 26 movies, they're not all going to be winners. But while there have been some bad Bond movies, I do not think there has ever been a bad Bond. And yes, that includes the guy you're thinking of right now. As far as Craig's run goes, I really liked Casino Royale and Skyfall. Uh, Quantum of Solace kind of sucked, but they did have the writer strike going on during that time, so that's understandable. And Spectre was mediocre, and they have no excuse there because there was no writer strike, it just wasn't very interesting. No Time to Die, I thought, was actually pretty good and allowed Daniel Craig to go out on a high note. It's certainly not perfect, and I have some issues, but it was good. They definitely put in a lot of callbacks to previous Bond movies. In the opening credits, there's even a bit of an homage to Dr. No, which I thought was a nice touch. There's a bit of On Her Majesty's Secret Service as well, where James and Madeline are driving down a highway and Madeline asks, can't we go faster? And James says, we don't need to go faster. We have all the time in the world. And I thought, oh no, James, don't say that. Don't say we have all the time in the world. That did not end well last time. No Time to Die has all the things you would expect from a Bond film. You have exotic locales, exciting action sequences, and a sinister plot to take over and or destroy the world. Or maybe both. The sinister plot in question is probably not very realistic, but it's not so bad that I couldn't suspend my disbelief. And this time around, we have Billie Eilish singing the movie's theme song, and I thought she did a pretty good job with it. Certainly did better than Sam Smith. And I still can't believe that song won an Oscar, and yes, I think I will die mad about it. Unsurprisingly, considering this is the fifth time he's played the character, Craig plays James Bond very well. And in this movie, he's a very conflicted James Bond, because initially he's very reluctant to do much of anything except enjoy his retirement, or at least try to. He has definitely hit the getting too old for this shit phase of his life. But this reluctance is at odds with his sense of duty, and of course, eventually, duty wins. And since James has retired, we have a new 007 named Nomi, played by Lashana Lynch, and I thought she was great. She was strong, she was confident, she was skilled, and I had a lot of fun watching her rivalry with James. Ana de Armas has a small role as a CIA agent named Paloma, and when she first showed up, she had me a little concerned, because she was very nervous and a bit klutzy, and I thought, oh great. Comic relief sidekick that just gets in the way of everything. I was wrong, because as soon as the fighting starts, it turns out, oh, no, she's fine, she can handle herself. Way to subvert my expectations, no time to die. Well played. My only real complaint about this character is that she's in so little of the movie. I hope we get to see more of her in the future. Christoph Waltz is also briefly in this movie, reprising his role as Blofeld, and he's a treat to watch in any movie he's in. And then, of course, we have Rami Malek, who said in an interview that he wanted to make Safin as unsettling as possible. Nailed it! The way he moves and the way he speaks very slowly and softly, just everything this guy does is so disturbing. The first time we see him is in a flashback sequence, and he's actually wearing a mask at the time to hide his facial disfigurement, and that flashback sequence played out kind of like a horror movie. Honestly, I thought he looked creepier with the mask than without it. I do have a few complaints about this character, though. First of all, his first name is, like, a couple of letters off from Lucifer. Bit on the nose. And I didn't fully understand his motivations. Uh, I understood them at first. Initially, he wants revenge. And then he got that revenge, and I guess he just thought, well, guess I'll take over the world now. And I understood what he was trying to do, but not really why he was trying to do it, because it almost felt like he transformed into a completely different villain, and it wasn't altogether clear just how he got from point A to point B. As for the ending of this movie, without giving too much away, 
Even though they did kind of hint at it early on, I was a little surprised that they actually went there. I was surprised they had the balls to go there. But I think it worked. It was a gutsy move, but considering the path that Craig's Bond has been on throughout this series, I think it was the right move. Overall, another good entry in the Bond universe, a great send-off for Daniel Craig, and I enjoyed it very much. And I do recommend seeing it if you can do so safely. It does continue from where Spectre left off, but I don't think you necessarily need to see Spectre to understand what's going on in this movie. You're not missing all that much. And Spectre wasn't that great anyway. And that's all I have to say about No Time to Die. Till next time, take care.